Gastroenteritis, Wikipedia Audio Gastroenteritis, also known as infectious diarrhea, is inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract that involves the stomach and small intestine. Symptoms may include diarrhea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. Fever, lack of energy, and dehydration may also occur. This typically lasts less than two weeks. It is not related to influenza though it has been called the stomach flu. Gastroenteritis can be due to infections by viruses, bacteria, parasites, and fungus. The most common cause is viruses. In children rotavirus is the most common cause of severe disease. In adults, norovirus and campylobacter are common. Transmission may occur due to eating improperly prepared foods, drinking contaminated water, or through close contact with an individual who is infected. Testing to confirm the diagnosis is typically not needed. Prevention includes hand washing with soap, drinking clean water, proper disposal of human waste, and breastfeeding babies instead of using formula. The rotavirus vaccine is recommended in children. Treatment involves getting enough fluids. For mild or moderate cases, this can typically be achieved by drinking oral rehydration solution. In those who are breastfed, continued breastfeeding is recommended. For more severe cases, intravenous fluids may be needed. Fluids may also be given by a nasogastric tube. Zinc supplementation is recommended in children. Antibiotics are generally not needed. Signs and Symptoms in 2015 2 billion cases of gastroenteritis resulted in 1.3 million deaths globally. Children and those in the developing world are affected the most. In 2011, about 1.7 billion cases resulting in about 700,000 deaths of children under the age of 5. In the developing world children less than two years of age frequently get six or more infections a year. It is less common in adults, partly due to the development of immunity. Gastroenteritis typically involves both diarrhea and vomiting, or less commonly, presents with only one or the other. Abdominal cramping may also be present. Signs and symptoms usually begin 12-72 hours after contracting the infectious agent. If due to a viral agent, the condition usually resolves within one week. Some viral causes may also be associated with fever, fatigue, headache, and muscle pain. If the stool is bloody, the cause is less likely to be viral and more likely to be bacterial. Some bacterial infections may be associated with severe abdominal pain and may persist for several weeks. Children infected with rotavirus usually make a full recovery within three to eight days. However, in poor countries treatment for severe infections is often out of reach and persistent diarrhea is common. Dehydration is a common complication of diarrhea and a child with a significant degree of dehydration may have a prolonged capillary refill, poor skin turgor, and abnormal breathing. Repeat infections are typically seen in areas with poor sanitation and malnutrition, stunted growth and long-term cognitive delays can result. Reactive arthritis occurs in 1% of people following infections with Campylobacter species, and Guillain-Barre syndrome occurs in 0.1%. Hemolytic uremic syndrome may occur due to infection with Shiga toxin producing Escherichia coli or Shigella species, causing low platelet counts, poor kidney function, and low red blood cell count. Children are more predisposed to getting HUS than adults. Some viral infections may produce benign infantile seizures.
Viruses and the bacteria Escherichia coli and Campylobacter species are the primary causes of gastroenteritis. There are, however, many other infectious agents that can cause this syndrome. Non-infectious causes are seen on occasion, but they are less likely than a viral or bacterial cause. Risk of infection is higher in children due to their lack of immunity and relatively poor hygiene. Rotavirus, norovirus, adenovirus, and astrovirus are known to cause viral gastroenteritis. Rotavirus is the most common cause of gastroenteritis in children, and produces similar rates in both the developed and developing world. Viruses cause about 70% of episodes of infectious diarrhea in the pediatric age group. Rotavirus is a less common cause in adults due to acquired immunity. Norovirus is the cause in about 18% of all cases. Norovirus is the leading cause of gastroenteritis among adults in America, causing greater than 90% of outbreaks. These localized epidemics typically occur when groups of people spend time in close physical proximity to each other, such as on cruise ships, in hospitals, or in restaurants. People may remain infectious even after their diarrhea has ended. Norovirus is the cause of about 10% of cases in children. In the developed world Campylobacter jejuni is the primary cause of bacterial gastroenteritis, with half of these cases associated with exposure to poultry. In children, bacteria are the cause in about 15% of cases, with the most common types being Escherichia coli, Salmonella, Shigella, and Campylobacter species. If food becomes contaminated with bacteria and remains at room temperature for a period of several hours, the bacteria multiply and increase the risk of infection in those who consume the food. Some foods commonly associated with illness include raw or undercooked meat, poultry, seafood and eggs, raw sprouts, unpasteurized milk and soft cheeses, and fruit and vegetable juices. In the developing world, especially Sub-Saharan Africa and Asia, cholera is a common cause of gastroenteritis. This infection is usually transmitted by contaminated water or food. Toxigenic Clostridium difficile is an important cause of diarrhea that occurs more often in the elderly. Infants can carry these bacteria without developing symptoms. It is a common cause of diarrhea in those who are hospitalized and is frequently associated with antibiotic use. Staphylococcus aureus infectious diarrhea may also occur in those who have used antibiotics. Acute traveler's diarrhea is usually a type of bacterial gastroenteritis, while the persistent form is usually parasitic. Acid-suppressing medication appears to increase the risk of significant infection after exposure to a number of organisms, including Clostridium difficile, Salmonella, and Campylobacter species. The risk is greater in those taking proton pump inhibitors than with H2 antagonists. Cause a number of protozoa can cause gastroenteritis most commonly Giardia lamblia but Entamoeba histolytica, Cryptosporidium species, and other species have also been implicated. As a group, these agents comprise about 10% of cases in children. Giardia occurs more commonly in the developing world, but this etiologic agent causes this type of illness to some degree nearly everywhere. It occurs more commonly in persons who have traveled to areas with high prevalence, children who attend daycare, men who have sex with men, and following disasters. Transmission may occur via consumption of contaminated water, or when people share personal objects. In places with wet and dry seasons, water quality typically worsens during the wet season, and this correlates with the time of outbreaks. 
In areas of the world with four seasons, infections are more common in the winter. Bottle feeding of babies with improperly sanitized bottles is a significant cause on a global scale. Transmission rates are also related to poor hygiene, especially among children, in crowded households, and in those with pre-existing poor nutritional status. After developing tolerance, adults may carry certain organisms without exhibiting signs or symptoms, and thus act as natural reservoirs of contagion. While some agents only occur in primates, others may occur in a wide variety of animals. There are a number of non-infectious causes of inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract. Some of the more common include medications, certain foods such as lactose, and gluten. Crohn's disease is also a non-infectious source of gastroenteritis. Disease secondary to toxins may also occur. Some food-related conditions associated with nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea include, sig water of poisoning due to consumption of contaminated predatory fish, scombroid associated with the consumption of certain types of spoiled fish, tetrodotoxin poisoning from the consumption of puffer fish among others, and botulism typically due to improperly preserved food. In the United States, rates of emergency department use for non-infectious gastroenteritis dropped 30% from 2006 until 2011. Of the 20 most common conditions seen in the emergency department, rates of non-infectious gastroenteritis had the largest decrease in visits in that time period. Gastroenteritis is defined as vomiting or diarrhea due to inflammation of the small or large bowel, often due to infection. The changes in the small bowel are typically non-inflammatory, while the ones in the large bowel are inflammatory. The number of pathogens required to cause an infection varies from as few as 1 to as many as 10 8. Gastroenteritis is typically diagnosed clinically, based on a person's signs and symptoms. Determining the exact cause is usually not needed as it does not alter management of the condition. However, stool cultures should be performed in those with blood in the stool those who might have been exposed to food poisoning, and those who have recently traveled to the developing world. It may also be appropriate in children young than five, old people, and those with poor immune function. Diagnostic testing may also be done for surveillance. As hypoglycemia occurs in approximately 10% of infants and young children, Measuring serum glucose in this population is recommended. Electrolytes and kidney function should also be checked when there is a concern about severe dehydration. Viral Bacterial A determination of whether or not the person has dehydration is an important part of the assessment, with dehydration typically divided into mild, moderate, and severe cases. In children, the most accurate signs of moderate or severe dehydration are a prolonged capillary refill, poor skin turgor, and abnormal breathing. Other useful findings include sunken eyes, decreased activity, a lack of tears, and a dry mouth. A normal urinary output and oral fluid intake is reassuring. Laboratory testing is of little clinical benefit in determining the degree of dehydration. Thus the use of urine testing or ultrasounds is generally not needed. Parasitic Transmission Non-infectious Pathophysiology Diagnosis other potential causes of signs and symptoms that mimic those seen in gastroenteritis that need to be ruled out include appendicitis, volvulus, inflammatory bowel disease, urinary tract infections, and diabetes mellitus. Pancreatic insufficiency, 
short bowel syndrome, Whipple's disease, celiac disease, and laxative abuse should also be considered. The differential diagnosis can be complicated somewhat if the person exhibits only vomiting or diarrhea. Appendicitis may present with vomiting, abdominal pain, and a small amount of diarrhea in up to 33% of cases. This is in contrast to the large amount of diarrhea that is typical of gastroenteritis. Infections of the lungs or urinary tract in children may also cause vomiting or diarrhea. Classical diabetic ketoacidosis presents with abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting, but without diarrhea. One study found that 17% of children with DKA were initially diagnosed as having gastroenteritis. A supply of easily accessible uncontaminated water and good sanitation practices are important for reducing rates of infection and clinically significant gastroenteritis. Personal measures have been found to decrease rates of gastroenteritis in both the developing and developed world by as much as 30%. Alcohol-based gels may also be effective. Food or drink that is thought to be contaminated should be avoided. Breastfeeding is important, especially in places with poor hygiene, as is improvement of hygiene generally. Breast milk reduces both the frequency of infections and their duration. Dehydration Due to both its effectiveness and safety, in 2009 the World Health Organization recommended that the rotavirus vaccine be offered to all children globally. Two commercial rotavirus vaccines exist and several more are in development. In Africa and Asia these vaccines reduced severe disease among infants and countries that have put in place national immunization programs have seen a decline in the rates and severity of disease. This vaccine may also prevent illness in non-vaccinated children by reducing the number of circulating infections. Since 2000, the implementation of a rotavirus vaccination program in the United States has substantially decreased the number of cases of diarrhea by as much as 80%. The first dose of vaccine should be given to infants between 6 and 15 weeks of age. The oral cholera vaccine has been found to be 50-60% effective over two years. Gastroenteritis is usually an acute and self-limiting disease that does not require medication. The preferred treatment in those with mild to moderate dehydration is oral rehydration therapy. For children at risk of dehydration from vomiting, taking a single dose of the anti-vomiting medication metoclopramide or ondansetron, may be helpful and butyl scopolamine is useful in treating abdominal pain. The primary treatment of gastroenteritis in both children and adults is rehydration. This is preferably achieved by drinking rehydration solution, although intravenous delivery may be required if there is a decreased level of consciousness or if dehydration is severe. Drinking replacement therapy products made with complex carbohydrates may be superior to those based on simple sugars. Drinks especially high in simple sugars, such as soft drinks and fruit juices, are not recommended in children under 5 years of age as they may increase diarrhea. Plain water may be used if more specific ort preparations are unavailable or the person is not willing to drink them. A nasogastric tube can be used in young children to administer fluids if warranted. In those who require intravenous fluids, one to four hours worth is often sufficient. It is recommended that breastfed infants continue to be nursed in the usual fashion, and that formula-fed infants continue their formula immediately after rehydration with ORT. Lactose-free or lactose-reduced formulas usually are not necessary. Children should continue their usual diet during episodes of diarrhea with the exception that foods high in simple sugars should be avoided. The BRAT diet is no longer recommended, 
as it contains insufficient nutrients and has no benefit over normal feeding. Some probiotics have been shown to be beneficial in reducing both the duration of illness and the frequency of stools. They may also be useful in preventing and treating antibiotic-associated diarrhea. Fermented milk products are similarly beneficial. Zinc supplementation appears to be effective in both treating and preventing diarrhea among children in the developing world. Antiemetic medications may be helpful for treating vomiting in children. Ondansetron has some utility, with a single dose being associated with less need for intravenous fluids, fewer hospitalizations, and decreased vomiting. Metoclopramide might also be helpful. However, the use of ondansetron might possibly be linked to an increased rate of return to hospital in children. The intravenous preparation of ondansetron may be given orally if clinical judgment warrants. Dimenhydrinate, while reducing vomiting, does not appear to have a significant clinical benefit. Antibiotics are not usually used for gastroenteritis although they are sometimes recommended if symptoms are particularly severe or if a susceptible bacterial cause is isolated or suspected. If antibiotics are to be employed, a macrolid is preferred over a fluoroquinolone due to higher rates of resistance to the latter. Pseudomembranous colitis, usually caused by antibiotic use, is managed by discontinuing the causative agent and treating it with either metronidazole or vancomycin. Bacteria and protozoans that are amenable to treatment include Shigella salmonella typhi and Giardia species. In those with Giardia species or Entamoeba histolytica, tinidazole treatment is recommended and superior to metronidazole. The World Health Organization recommends the use of antibiotics in young children who have both bloody diarrhea and fever. Differential Diagnosis Antimotility medication has a theoretical risk of causing complications, and although clinical experience has shown this to be unlikely, these drugs are discouraged in people with bloody diarrhea or diarrhea that is complicated by fever. Lopiramide, an opioid analog, is commonly used for the symptomatic treatment of diarrhea. Lopiramide is not recommended in children, however, as it may cross the immature blood-brain barrier and cause toxicity. Bismuth subsalicylate, an insoluble complex of trivalent bismuth and salicylate, can be used in mild to moderate cases but salicylate toxicity is theoretically possible. It is estimated that there were 2 billion cases of gastroenteritis that resulted in 1.3 million deaths globally in 2015. Children and those in the developing world are most commonly affected. As of 2011, in those less than 5, there were about 1.7 billion cases resulting in 0.7 million deaths, with most of these occurring in the world's poorest nations. More than 450,000 of these fatalities are due to rotavirus in children under 5 years of age. Cholera causes about 3 to 5 million cases of disease and kills approximately 100,000 people yearly. In the developing world, Children less than two years of age frequently get six or more infections a year that result in significant gastroenteritis. It is less common in adults, partly due to the development of acquired immunity. Prevention In 1980, gastroenteritis from all causes caused 4.6 million deaths in children, with the majority occurring in the developing world. Death rates were reduced significantly by the year 2000, largely due to the introduction and widespread use of oral rehydration therapy. In the U.S., infections causing gastroenteritis are the second most common infection, 
and they result in between 200 and 375 million cases of acute diarrhea and approximately 10,000 deaths annually, with 150 to 300 of these deaths in children less than 5 years of age. The first usage of gastroenteritis was in 1825. Before this time it was commonly known as typhoid fever or cholera morbus, among others, or less specifically as griping of the guts, surfeit, flux, colic, bowel complaint, or any one of a number of other archaic names for acute diarrhea. Cholera morbus is a historical term that was used to refer to gastroenteritis rather than specifically cholera. Lifestyle Vaccination Management Gastroenteritis is associated with many colloquial names, including Montezuma's Revenge, Deli Belly, La Tarista, and Backdoor Sprint, among others. It has played a role in many military campaigns and is believed to be the origin of the term No Guts No Glory. Gastroenteritis is the main reason for 3.7 million visits to physicians a year in the United States and 3 million visits in France. In the United States gastroenteritis as a whole is believed to result in costs of 23 billion US dollars per year with that due to rotavirus alone resulting in estimated costs of 1 billion US dollars a year. There are a number of vaccines against gastroenteritis in development. For example, vaccines against Shigella and enterotoxigenic Escherichia coli, two of the leading bacterial causes of gastroenteritis worldwide. Many of the same agents cause gastroenteritis in cats and dogs as in humans. The most common organisms are Campylobacter, Clostridium difficile, Clostridium perforingens, and Salmonella. A large number of toxic plants may also cause symptoms. Some agents are more specific to a certain species. Transmissible gastroenteritis coronavirus occurs in pigs resulting in vomiting, diarrhea, and dehydration. It is believed to be introduced to pigs by wild birds and there is no specific treatment available. It is not transmissible to humans. Rehydration Dietary Antiemetics Antibiotics Antimotility agents Epidemiology History Society and Culture Research Other Animals <laughs>